What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the Malt Activist, and today I want to talk to you about chill filtration. What is it, and why do I hate it? Okay, now before I go on to my rant, let me first explain to you what chill filtration is and why it started. Of course, side note, I do not claim any historical accuracies on my uh, anecdotes, so please take it with a pinch of salt. And yes, I do appreciate the irony of the fact that I'm starting a subject that is slightly scientific and my caveat is please take it with a pinch of salt. But you know what I mean. Now, back in the day before chill filtration started, distilleries were sending their whiskies all around the world to thirsty customers. And as you know, transportation of any kind of cargo across the world takes a really long time, sometimes months. Now, take for example, let's say uh, a distillery in, in Kentucky in, in America is sending their whiskies to Japan. Um, now let's say they st send them out in August, okay? It takes a couple of months, maybe more, and by the time the whiskeys reach uh, Japan, it's like November, December, for example, right? Which is peak uh, winter season in Japan. Now this whiskey has left Kentucky in August, where it's very hot at that time, and now arrived in Japan where it's quite cold. Okay, now what happened is that the people who were receiving that consignment had a look at that whiskey and they were like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? There's something wrong with this whiskey, right? It's all hazy and it's all cloudy. Ooh, that must mean it's a shit whiskey. Now take it back, okay? Now what those poor people, right, receiving those whiskeys were experiencing is something called flocking or flocculation which is essentially the the natural fatty oils or the long tail esters that sit in a whiskey those are getting chilled and when they get chilled they they clump together and cause a haze in the whiskey or cause the whiskey to go cloudy however people didn't know that and they thought hey man this whiskey is bad quality now, other than that, there's people around the world who are drinking their whiskeys and they're, you know, some of them are putting ice in it, some of them are putting very cold water in it, and they're all noticing the same thing. My whiskey's getting cloudy or hazy, and they're all arriving at the same conclusion, that this whiskey is shit. So they threw it back in the face of the bartender and said, get me something else, get me something that doesn't go hazy when I put ice and water in it. Now, when the distilleries heard this, they shat their pants. They're like, what the hell happened? Why are our whiskeys behaving this way? We don't have an inferior product, so why is everybody sending it back? So they assembled all the scientists of the world. They locked them in a room and they said, come up with an answer or we'll kill all your children, right? And then finally, under duress, one of them came up with the bright idea. They said, oh my God, you know what's happening? Basically, all the long tail uh, esters and the fatty uh, solids and the oils in the whiskey are getting are getting solidified and they're clumping together in uh, in cold weather uh, and in cold uh, or when you chill the whiskey and that's causing the whiskey to go hazy, right? And everybody clapped and they said, "Well done, nice one." And on top of that, he said, "By the way, by the way, if you keep your whiskeys above forty six percent." You're not gonna have this problem anyway, right? So it's only whiskeys that are under 46% that have this problem of cloudiness or haziness. Anything above 46%, no problem. And everyone was relieved because none of their children were shot dead by the distilleries um, as they were threatened and everyone hugged this one scientist guy. And the distilleries were relieved, they're like, ah. Oh, Thank God, it's not a big deal. We'll just go back and tell the people, hey man, it's not that our whiskeys are inferior, it's just a little scientific uh, reaction to cold. And it's just science, don't worry about it. Drink your whiskeys. And they thought that would be the end of it, but no. People are stupid, they're idiots. They went, no, we don't give a shit about your science. Give us a whiskey that does not cloud and get hazy. I don't care whether it affects quality or not. I want to make sure that when I look at it, I am pleased. And the distilleries went, fuck you, know? I guess 
I guess we're gonna have to chill filter our whiskeys now because these idiots refuse to understand. And that's exactly how chill filtration started. Some idiot went, you know what? I don't like the way this whiskey looks when I cool it. So can you get me something that looks really nice when I cool it? Because I want to look at my whiskey when I drink it. And apparently that's where the quality lies. And all the distilleries went, sure, I guess, I guess that's what we're gonna to have to do now, right? We're gonna to have to start chill filtering our whiskeys. Now, what is chill filtration? Let me give you an example. You know, you know when you put a leftover curry in the fridge overnight and then you come back to it the next day and on top of that curry, there's this, there's this thick film of fat and solids that is sticking on top of that curry and then you use your spoon and you scrape it away and you throw that thing away. Well, you've just chill filtered your vindaloo. Essentially, that's what it is. Now, chill filtration in whiskeys is kind of essentially that. What you do is you, you bring the temperature down of the whiskey to like below zero. What that does is it, it forces all these, all these uh, fatty, fatty compounds, oils, long tail esters to clump together and they kind of solidify in the spirit itself. And then that spirit, this is before bottling by the way, and that spirit is then filtered through many different things. Sometimes paper, sometimes charcoal, sometimes uh, earth, sometimes uh, metals, sometimes even crushed um, shells, seashells, crushed seashells, anything, anything that will that will prevent these these fatty solids from uh, from uh, entering into the whiskey and then ultimately what you have is you have a whiskey that is very clear to look at does not become cloudy or hazy and uh, yeah that's it so i know what you're thinking good news right no 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 not good news not good news we didn't solve a problem i think we created one in my humble opinion right because when you do something this drastic to to uh, to a process that's been around for five six hundred years, right? And when you do something so drastic to it, you will always split uh, the audience down the middle, right? Now this has two schools of thoughts: one, uh, where people say, "Hey, chill filtration really doesn't affect the quality of the whiskey; uh, it it uh, it retains all the natural ingredients and the and the pro uh, and the aromas and the flavors." In fact. Chill filtration might even remove some of the off notes uh, from the whiskey, which are not desirable. Hence, there's nothing wrong with chill filtration. This is the uh, majority view of all the distilleries, unfortunately. However, there's a second school of thought and it belongs to whiskey snobs like myself who say, man, you know what you're doing? You're removing, in my opinion, the essence of the whiskey because, because all that is what you consider impurities or faulty in a whiskey is what I consider the soul of the whiskey. And I think it is what whiskey is made of. Whiskey is made up of a sum of everything um, a good and bad or bad that you consider, right? So by removing those uh, f uh, those long tail uh, esters and, and fatty solids, you are generally taking away the soul of the whiskey. And the mouthfeel, which to me is one of the most important aspects of, of whiskey drinking, is the way it feels on my palate. And I know for a fact that when you remove these compounds, when you remove the oiliness and some of the fats from the whiskey itself, it becomes by logic thin, thin on the mouthfeel. And I personally don't like thin mouthfeel whiskeys. And I know many, many, many whiskey drinkers who do not like it also. I'm, if you know me well enough, an absolute purist. I like my whiskeys at cost strength from a single cask, no color added and non-chill filtered. That's it. Do not mess with my whiskeys is what I'm saying. And to be fair, actually, you know, even different distillers have varying opinions on, uh, on chill filtration. Now, for example, uh, Fred No, who's a master distiller at Jim Beam says, hey, if you, do, uh, if you do chill filtration correctly, you'll never really be able to tell the difference. Um, the, the loss in flavor or color is, is minimal and it won't affect anything. However, Eddie Russell of Wild Turkey admits, says yes, chill filtration does 
cause a, uh, cause a bit a bit of uh, loss in color uh, some loss in taste as well however he's going to keep doing that for whiskies that are under 46 percent uh, purely to get rid of the haze and and i think that's that's just corporate policy so he's doing what it is frankly i would love to try all these whiskies that are you know coming in at 40 43 percent and i'd like to try them non-chill filtered like the glenfiddich 12 or the glenlivet 12 or a lot of the entry level whiskies that come in at 40 43 percent which have been chill filtered because it's only aesthetically pleasing and for no other reason at all imagine how good a glenlivet or glenfiddich 12 would be if it was non-chill filtered right i know some of you might think that you know, I'm, I'm just uh, pulling hairs at this point or just overanalyzing things or just being pedantic. But let me tell you something. When you've drunk whiskey for as long as I have, I'm telling you there's a certain nuance to, to a whiskey that is non-chill filtered. Now, I'm not saying that I will always be able to pinpoint whether whiskey has been chill filtered or non-chill filtered, but I do know for a fact that I personally enjoy non-chill filtered whiskeys more because of their mouthfeel, because of their viscosity. And, and that's why a lot of the people don't like entry level whiskeys uh, is because they're so weak on the palate, the mouthfeel is so thin and it doesn't give you a feeling of robustness. Uh, and imagine if those whiskeys were non-chill filtered. Um, you know how different they might be. But we can only we can only speculate because we know that's never going to happen. So let's keep dreaming. Of course, the other argument is that there are some whiskeys out there that are that are chill filtered and do really well, like Wild Turkey Rare Breed or um, or Knob Creek or the Michter's Michter's Barrel Strength. Uh, rye whiskey, uh, they're all chill filtered and they taste amazing. My answer to that is, imagine how much better they taste, you know? So in conclusion, what I'm saying is, this is more of an opini opinion video. Uh, hopefully you know what chill filtration is. Uh, I want you to go out there and pick a whiskey that you know for a fact is uh, chill filtered and a whiskey you know for a fact is non-chill filtered. Uh, preferably should be around the same age. Uh, and, and, and similar maturation so you can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Maybe I'll do that for my next video. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're curious, uh, go, you know, go do that, see what you prefer. There might be some people who might say, hey, you know what, I actually prefer a whiskey that's chill filtered and I prefer the thinner mouthfeel uh, and it, it's, it's more palatable and easier to drink and more power to you and there's nothing wrong with that and I respect that completely. But as a seasoned whiskey drinker, I need I need more complexity. I, I, I don't need you to take stuff out of whiskey. I need you to let the stuff stay there. And you know, let's not mess with something that we've been doing so well for 500 years uh, is my only thing. So, or more, 700 years. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's it, man. That's, so that's my little rant on uh, chill filtration. Uh, I'm, I'm personally, uh, not a fan. Uh, I know there's a school of thought that says you'll never be able to tell the difference um, in a blind tasting and you know that might be true but I'm going to say it the way I feel it and that is you know don't mess with my whiskey man. Don't mess with my whiskey. So thank you. Thank you for joining me for this little rant on chill filtration. I am the multi-activist. Until next time. Peace.